I completely get the pickle that the Cavaliers face. You got LeBron James who's got one foot out the door. He's ready to go play in Magic's organization for the Lakers next year. It seems like that's what's going to happen. On the flip side, you've still got LeBron for this year. He's not going anywhere this year. So you got to appease the head inmate of the asylum. You got to appease the real general manager of the organization, LeBron James, and try to bring in more talent, an upgrade to your roster where you can, to try and better compete with the Golden State Warriors. But again, for a team with no draft picks and being way over the salary cap into the luxury tax base, that was going to be incredibly challenging. And that's even before the dynamic of Kyrie Irving going and demanding and requesting a trade. But I looked at this Warriors team and felt like they really had three major weaknesses that had to be addressed if they were going to be any more competitive against the Warriors the next go-around in the NBA Finals, assuming they would even get there. They had to get younger and more athletic in the wings just in general. They needed to get better defensively on the perimeter. And number three, they needed more floor spacers, guys that could shoot the three-point ball better than what they had. Because especially if you're going to play this back-and-forth, up-and-down, all-star game type of style with the Warriors and not defend them, you're going to have to be able to hit a lot more of the three-point shot than what the Cavaliers roster of 2016-2017 could. So to me, those are the three areas that they had to address. And you look at those moves that they have made, and they just make no damn sense to me. Like, you need to get better, def- younger and more athletic on the perimeter, so you bring in Derrick Rose with his bad knees. Yes, you had the Kyrie Irving thing come up, so you trade him off. You're able to bring in Jay Crowder, so you could say you got a younger, a little more athletic, a little bit better defensively on the perimeter. Perhaps that's true. But some of the issues you had with Kyrie Irving in terms of not being a great facilitator, especially playing with LeBron, being a second really ball-dominant type of player, being a bit of a ball vacuum, who was a liability defensively against somebody especially like a Steph Curry, you go out and make a deal where the guy you bring in as a replacement is five foot nine, older, just as ball dominant, the same level of facilitator, which means not great. And oh, to boot, he's got a bad hip, and I'm talking about Isaiah Thomas. And then the latest move for a team that needed to get younger and more athletic on the wings, that needed to get better defensively on the perimeter, the Cavaliers get the recently bought out from the Chicago Bulls, Dwayne Wade in his mid-30s ass to come in. So think about this. The Cleveland Cavaliers potentially could have a starting lineup, assuming everybody is healthy. And when you're talking about a team that is reliant upon Isaiah Thomas and his bad hip, Derrick Rose and his bulky knees, Flash Dwayne Wade and his bulky body at this stage of his career, assuming health is a great, great assumption. But assuming everybody is healthy, You're talking about potentially rocking with a starting five that consists of Isaiah Thomas, Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, Kevin Love, and Tristan Thompson. Basically, you got shorter, older, less athletic, and worse as a perimeter shooting team in terms of your starting lineup. So all the things you needed to do, you've done none of those. And in fact, I feel like you've gotten worse in some of those areas. You could say, in theory, well, it maybe adds to the bench strength a little bit because you bring somebody like a Jay Crowder off the bench. Okay, he's a nice role player. Now you've got J.R. Smith coming off the bench in more of a six-man type of role, which is where he belongs. What the hell difference is that going to make? For a Cavaliers team that needs to match up against a five-man lineup that the Warriors run of Curry, Clay. Iguodala, Durant, and Draymond Green, they're going to try and run up with a combination of their best starting five, in theory, of Isaiah Thomas, Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, Kevin Love, and Tristan Thompson. 
Or if you say you play Love or Thompson and then you put in either a Crowder or Smith, how in the hell is this Cavaliers team anywhere close to being more competitive or a better matchup against the Golden State Warriors? This is just insane to me. The whole thing of well, Dwayne Wade and LeBron have history going back to Miami. They have history going back to Miami when both of them were still arguably in the prime of their career, especially Dwayne Wade was still at a stage of the prime of his career. And this was, again, several years back several years back and they also were the super team they weren't going up against another super team like the golden state warriors so it's an entirely different thing i mean a team is resting their championship aspirations honestly now on a mid-30s two guard that is in some ways a shell of his former glory days a six foot two, six foot three point guard in Derrick Rose who can't shoot, who's bad defensively and has bulky knees and isn't a great facilitator. And then Isaiah Thomas, a five nine point guard who's in his thirties now with a bulky hip, who's a liability defensively and not much better of a shooter or a facilitator than Kyrie Irving. Where in the hell did this Cavaliers team get better? Where in the hell did they do anything? to space the floor better, to get younger and more athletic defensively on the perimeter outside of maybe the addition of Jay Crowder. It just feels like this is going to be one of those seasons where you're going to get to a point, and maybe the Cavaliers get all the way to the NBA Finals, but we saw this in LeBron's last year in Cleveland. We saw this his last year in Miami in the NBA Finals against the Spurs. You're going to get to that point in time where you feel like LeBron's going to know that his team has no real chance, and you're going to see fuck it LeBron come the NBA Finals, where he's going to put forth just enough effort, get a couple triple doubles to fool everybody into thinking he gives a crap, fool everybody because the stats indicate that he's so great, uh, into thinking that he's playing hard when he really doesn't give a crap and he's truly just going through the motions and waiting for Magic to sign him come July so he can go play with Lonzo and Brandon Ingram and the crew in Los Angeles at the Staples Center. I mean, this is crazy. The Cavaliers wanted to compete with the Warriors by bringing in Isaiah Thomas, Derrick Rose, and Dwayne Wade. Am I the only one taking crazy pills here? Am I the only one that thinks this is completely and totally ridiculous? And if anything, will only help to accelerate LeBron James's departure come this upcoming offseason. I mean, what the hell is this team doing?